What's up guys, Sean here with Spencer's Lawn Care. Today I'm gonna give you five tips to set yourself apart from your competition. Hope you guys enjoy. Okay, the first thing that you can do to set yourself apart from other lawn care companies in your area is presentation. Now let's read what presentation means. A presentation of process of presenting a topic to an audience. In our case, the audience is our customers. It is typically a demonstration, introduction, or lecture, or speech meant to inform, persuade, or build goodwill. So basically, you're trying to project to your customers that, hey, I can be trusted, and hey, let me mow your yard, let me do your landscaping, whatever. That's what presentation is. The next thing that you can do to set yourself apart from your competition is your customer service. Let's read a little bit of what customer service is. Customer service is the provision of service to the customers before, during, and after the purchase. So basically, before you get the job, during the job, and after you're done with the job. All of that goes into detail of customer service. The perception of success of such interactions or dependent employees who can adjust themselves to the personality of the guest. Customer service concerns priority on organizations assigned the customer's relative to components such as product, innovation, and pricing. In this sense, an organization that values good customer service may spend more money in training employees than the average organization or may proactively interview customers for feedback. So basically, when it's all said and done, you ask your customers, hey, what did you like? What did you not like about our customer service? Uh, how did you find us? You know, was it Google? Was it Craigslist? You know, was it word of mouth? All this plays in the fact, guys, whenever you're dealing in customer service. But back to the main topic up here about the perception of success and interactions independent on employees, okay? That's a big thing. Whenever your employees out there are out there, you know, if they're not giving the same customer service as you are as the owner of the company, this can really hurt you. If you have a, a, a smart aleck customer or smart aleck uh, employee or an employee that's lackluster or doesn't have the drive or the will to want to do the job as good as you can, that can really affect your, uh, you know, your business negatively. Okay, number three is quality. In this case, quality in business. Okay, we're going to skip the first part here, but I want to come down to this part right here. Consumers may focus on the specifications, quality of a product or service, or how it compares to the competitors in the marketplace. Producers might measure the conformance, quality, or degree to which the product service was produced correctly. Okay, now this is huge for us, guys, because say you go out and you mow a yard beautiful, okay? It's got beautiful stripes, but you didn't edge it, you know, you didn't clean it up. Guess what? That customer is going to be left with a negative thought of your company right then and there. Or say you just skipped one of those steps. You didn't edge the walkway. Maybe you edged just the driveway. So then the customer walks out and he says, well, my driveway's done, but why didn't they do the walkway? So automatically in their mindset, they're going to think his quality of service or basically his job that he did is not the performance of his competitors. You know, it doesn't compare to the competitors. So should they search elsewhere or should they stick with you, give you another chance? More than likely, the first time they're going to call you and say, hey, you missed this, you missed that. Okay, you might get away with it once, but if you do it twice, I guarantee you they're going to be going to your competitor. So keep that in mind, guys. Quality of business. All right, fellas, number four, as you can see, knowledge. Now, this one's very big, guys, because if you're not true or don't know what you're talking about, the customer is going to see right through you. But let's read what it says a little bit. Knowledge is a familiar familiarity. <laughs> Awareness or understanding of someone or something such as facts, information, description, or skills, which are acquired through experience, education, perceiving, discovering, or learning. Okay, now those are all big key factors, guys. If you go out to talk to a customer, the first thing they're going to be doing is trying to figure out if you know what you're talking about. So if they go out and they say, hey, what kind of tree is this? You know, and you say, oh, well, that's a, a birch tree and really it's an oak tree. Right then and there, you know, they're going to know, maybe this guy doesn't know as much as what he's claiming to know. Or if they ask you, hey, is this Kentucky bluegrass or is this whatever, you know, if you don't know what these products are right off the rip, they're going to know really quickly if you know what you're talking about. 
The same thing with plants. I deal with this a lot, guys. I go out to look at a plant. You know, they'll have something that's died off. Sometimes you can't tell exactly what it is. But, you know, they'll say, hey, well, what's this one? I really like this one, you know. And, you know, it could just be an ornamental grass. It could be a bush. It could be, you know, whatever. And if you don't know what it is, you can't tell them. So then right then and there, you're putting a negative thought of you and your company into their head. So knowledge, learning, guys, you got to learn. You know, learn what grasses are out there. Learn what trees are in your area. You know, learn your environment. You know, a, a plant that may grow in the south can't grow here in Ohio because of the winter. And vice versa. You know, a plant that can grow here in the north that needs a lot of moisture may not be able to grow in the south, you know, in a dry area, a desert area. Or so, you know, just saying. But, uh, yeah, guys, just know your product, know your company, and know the equipment and everything else that you're going to be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Key one right here, guys. Knowledge. Okay, the last but not least. First impression. Okay? Now, I want to say this one because everything else I've told you plays into this one. And this one is one of the most important, if not the most important. So let's read here. In psychology, a first impression is the event when one person first encounters another person and forms a mental image of that person. So as soon as they see you guys, that first initial thought could make or break you, okay? So you want to be clean shaven. A lot of times I'll admit I'm not. You want to be clean dressed, you know. Sometimes in our business we can't do that. We just got done working all day and we had to run out and give a bid real quick. But being the best that you can be for that time period can make or break the deal. So let's continue reading here. An impression accuracy varies depending on the observer and the target, person, object, scene, etc. being observed. First impressions are based on a wide range of characteristics, age, race, culture, language, gender, physical appearance, accent, posture, and voice. Number of people present and time allowed to process the first impression individuals give to others could greatly influence how they are treated and viewed in many contexts of everyday life. Okay? We, we all know in our everyday life, guys, that we're being judged from the time we roll out of bed till the time we go to sleep. It's just a part of life. Okay? We're all being judged. It's, it's sad, but it's true. Okay? So when you show up to talk to this customer for the first time, as soon as you hop out of your truck, van, whatever, they're automatically going to have a judgment of you you know that's why I always wear long sleeves guys you know I got tattoos when I was little you know my daughter's name my wife's name you know I got some other ones but I always make sure my tattoos are covered up when I show up to a customer I always have long sleeves because I don't want them to get into their mind you know is this guy not gonna be good around my house you know is is he gonna break into my house is he gonna steal you know a lot of us we would overlook that because you know us as younger adults now we kinda you know tattoos are natural to us but to the elderly older generation you know a tattoo could make or break a deal for someone but just going back to business guys you know making sure you're clean cut make sure your hair is good you know always smile i cannot say enough about smiling i don't do it enough guys smile to the customer it makes them feel comfortable with you you know talk about your family talk about your kids all this plays in because what they're trying to do is get comfortable with you. And if you can get comfortable with them or strike up some kind of startup friendship, you can get past all of these other ones, guys. If they like you, you're good to go. And 99% of the time, you're going to get the account. 